Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Yarnflakes podcast. My name is Audrey, I am a network designer from the southwest of France and this is a podcast where I talk about all of my knitting and fiber arts creations. Thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I hope you're doing very well. I have an episode which is a little bit less heavy than the previous ones, but I still have a couple of designs that I would like to share with you and one also another one that has been just published in a magazine and I would also like to update you on a work in progress. So that's the plan. You can find all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below so if you want to skip anything or find a project in particular you can check this out. I also put links to everything that I talk about, the yarns, the patterns I will be mentioning as well as links to my social media my patterns, uh, which are for sale on Ravelry, Payhip and Lovecrafts, and my Patreon page, if you would like to um, support my work and get access to some behind the scenes contents and some free patterns, etc. It happens on Patreon. So, I have a couple designs to share. And the first one is, uh, oh no, first, what I'm wearing, <laughs> just in case, I am wearing my Palin sweater, which is a lace, all over lace pullover which is really good when it's still 25-30 degrees in October. I'm filming this on Halloween day. Uh, maybe I should have worn some spooky outfits but oh well <laughs> it's too hot for this. So that's it. This has been published in September and yes it's a lovely lightweight comfy lace which has been knitted in cotton and linen blend from the Willy Skin, which is a French indie dyer from Lyon. That's it. I have just published a new pattern on Ravelry which has uh, been a long time coming. You may remember um, me working on this quite a few months ago if you've been following the podcast and it is the cloud wool wrap. So. Am I showing you the right side? Yes. This is a parallelogram shape, sort of. Um, so it tapers slightly at the edges, but not to a point, just slightly finer ends. And this is a modular stool that is knitted in a bunch of different textures and colors. So the idea behind this design was to use a um, set of mini skeins. Basically, I used a half advent calendar, a holiday calendar from Les Petites Potions, which is a French indie dyer, which is no longer dyeing uh, this year, but the dyeing yarn <laughs> this year. Um, but this was her half advent from last year. So basically you have the center of the wrap, which is made of 12 small sections. Each of them is worked in a different texture. So you start with the garter stitch here, then this twisted stitches and garter stripe, then moss stitch, you put stitches on hold and you pick them up here on the edge to work this section and it's a little bit hard to see in this multicolored speckled <laughs> uh, yarn but this is a slip stitch motif which makes kind of little butterfly things. Then you get your stitches back on the needle and you pick up some extra here to work this way again with this striped stockinette and ribbing section half brioche rib, you put the stitches on hold again and you do the same thing but the other way. So you pick up the other edge to work the seat stitch section. You get back here, picking up stitches here to work a waffle rib texture, a twisted ribbing, which is a little bit offset every four rows and this which is the most complex texture of the wrap which is just some right twist and left twist in this zigzag pattern. You put stitches on hold and you go all the other way 
pick up stitches where you cast on and on the sides here to work this square and right twist motif some flat large wide rib and then you start working with one bigger skein so all of those have been knitted with mini skeins so 85 meters about 20 25 grams of fingering weight yarns and then you use a big a full skein 100 gram 425 meter approximately to work the two edges which are knitted in this um, ribbing and pearl line texture with the decreases on one side to taper it you do the same on the other end decreasing as well and then you start working the I cord so there is an I cord bind off and then you work the I cord sideways all around the stall so there is a video in the pattern showing you how to do this you don't have to pick up <laughs> 2000 stitches and do it like this you can do it little by little and the video shows you how I did it basically so that you can have this I cord edge all around until you go back to where you started it so that's the basis in the pattern there is a schematic which you can also see on the pattern pages so on Ravelry it's the last picture and on Payhip it will be in the preview um, so in case you don't know, Payhip has a system which lets you see preview pages of the pattern. So I will upload a little <laughs> sample of the pattern there so you can see the schematic on Payhip as well because Payhip doesn't allow you to put a lot of pictures. Um, but to compensate, there is this preview system. So you don't have to buy the pattern to see the schematic. So in case <laughs> the shape is not super clear to you right now, um, check out the, the pattern page and you will see the schematic. And this way, you can clearly see which sections is being um, mentioned within the pattern. And you can also very easily plan your colors because I use the half advent calendar, uh, holiday calendar with mini skeins. I think it's really fun, especially if you want to, if you are planning on opening a yarn advent this year as well, because you can knit a section over two days. So because you need the 12 minis plus one <laughs> version of the yarn calendars, you can open your first mini, knit the first section over two days, or if you're starting to open it on the 12th of December, well, then you can do one per day, but you can give yourself two days for each, each section if you start at the beginning of December, and then you open the next mini and you knit the next section, etc. This is also why it's modular, because I thought it was a little bit fun to have a creative construction. But this would be really fun to use leftovers. Basically, you need about 85 meter per little section. Um, you can also mix within the section if you don't want to have a full block of one color and a full skein for the ends and the eye cord edging. But you can use leftovers, you can also just take a couple of skeins that you might have in your stash and arrange the colors however you want, because with the schematic you will be able to see clearly each section and you can color it in if you like, and yeah. So this is a highly customizable pattern. I wanted this to remain simple, so these only feature basic textures basically. So it's knit pearls, slipped stitches, uh, twisted stitches. The most complicated textures texture is this one. Um, this is the widest one, it's over like 19 stitches. And the thing is, it's so clearly a zigzag that even if you don't, um, if you make a mistake, you will clearly see uh, where you have gone wrong and the rest of the wrap is really basic small repeats the pattern provides charted and written instructions so in case you have a preference I wanted to have both so that you could knit it comfortably and yeah so it is an accessible uh, design for anyone who would like to <laughs> have fun with some textures uh, no lace 
which if you have been following me as I was knitting it, you may remember some of my original ideas were to make a lace edging. Um, in the end, I decided against it to have a lace-free design <laughs> and to kind of just celebrate texture. It makes quite a nice large uh, wrap, which is really nice and light because of the fingering way. This is a basic sock yarn, by the way. Merino and nylon. And yeah. I really like it. <laughs> I am really happy with the result. It's always fun to see modular kind of messy designs uh, come together at the end. And yeah, that is for cloud wool. Um, have I said everything? Yeah, I, I really hope you like it as well. I wanted to publish it early November, just in case you would like to plan to knit it uh, for the holidays, perhaps, if you want to have a project over the end of the year, um, because like I said, you can easily split it and knit a little bit every day. And that is how it is. It is now available on Ravelry and Payhip, and if you like it, there is a 15% discount on Ravelry for the release with the code cloud, just cloud. Um, little cloud of texture which I hope you will enjoy. It was really fun to knit, really fun to see the testers versions as well. Some people use like a, a really cohesive uh, palette, some other people use leftovers. Um, I do think it would be really nice also in just one color because you would like uh, really enjoy the texture and have something um, more structured. But yeah, the goal was to have something fun to knit, something accessible to beginners and something that lets you plan any sort of color arrangement you would like. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So that is it for um, November's release, which I hope you will enjoy. And it's so drapey and nice. And um, yeah, we are going to be on a heavy color <laughs> theme. So it's uh, November in colors, really, um, because the next thing I want to show you is a design that has been published last week when you're seeing this. And it is a colorwork scarf, which I also have been working on quite a while. Um, I wanted to give testers a long time to work this because it is a really fun, meditative, slow uh, project. It is the Yucast scarf. So this is an all-over colorwork scarf, which is knitted in fingering way. It's a tube scarf, so you start with a provisional cast on and then you knit it in the round, which makes it a good project if you would like to improve your color work skills. The pattern is not complicated. There is uh, very, very few floats to catch. So it's just easy to just go in the round and yeah, manage your tension and improve your color work in just one big project. It starts with an end with these arrangement of little motifs. And then the main portion of the scarf is a repeat of these geometric and big flower motif. Like I said, it has very few floats to catch, so it is accessible to adventurous beginners. And you can modify the length of the scarf by adding or removing repeats. And you finish it by making again this at the end and you close the end by either grafting the stitches together or making a three needle bind off which will have a visible seam but if you really hate <laughs> kitchen stitch you can do this as well um, compared to making a um, cowl where you need a smooth transition here it doesn't really matter at the end if there's a seam um, 
but yeah so any fingering yarn will work well for this because um, the gauge is dense enough that even if you use a super smooth yarn it's still going to work well and it will not mess up your tension too much speaking of yarn i used retrosaria super soft which I enjoyed it. It was my first time knitting with this. This is a yarn that is similar to Holstein Super Soft and all the fine um, Shetland type yarns uh, that are excellent for color work. And um, this has a gorgeous color palette. It is softer than Holstein Super Soft, I personally feel, once it's all bloomed and washed. It has a very similar um, aspect as you knit it uh, to whole scarn super soft which means it's ugly <laughs> when you knit it it's like making a really uneven open fabric that looks really wrong and you really need to let it wash so that it blooms and then it makes the perfect smooth color work fabric that burgundy color is really gorgeous look at all the nuance in it has bits of purple, of brighter red. The colors in this yarn are absolutely stunning. And it makes a really, really pretty color work. I did find, however, that it was um, even harder to work with than whole Super Soft. Not that... Um, the thing is, the advantage of using a... A uh, very woolly yarn for uh, color work is that you have all the fibers of the yarn that grab onto one another and so they pretty much stay the stitches stay in place they're not sliding like they might if it was a smooth color work yarn and this means that if you're a beginner in color work it's much easier if you use a wooly, rustic, non-superwash, etc. yarn because your tension will be easier to manage because it won't be slippery. You knit the stitches and they pretty much stay put. That is the advantage of horse super soft and it looks ugly when you knit it <laughs> and you might think it's all wrong but it's easier to knit eventually. I found that Rosaria super soft wasn't as smooth to knit with, it wasn't as grabby as it could have been and I found that while it behaved very similarly to hold super soft, it wasn't as easy to knit with. Um, so I would recommend the yarn because of the color palette, of the softness and of how beautiful it looks once blocked. But just a heads up that you do need to check on your tension and that it won't um, set itself as easily as other yarns of this type, I found. So that's it. <laughs> Just be aware that it might not be the most beginner-friendly color work yarn, um, in my opinion. Um, but it is so beautiful. <laughs> and like I said, it's much softer, which makes a really nice, cozy, woolly scarf. And yes, again, a project that is super fun to um, change colors with because the pattern includes several charts. You have a chart that has the colors of my sample so that you, if you want to do the same, you can just also check exactly how it looks like. There is another chart with just one contrast color. So if you want to make just the scarf with two colors, very minimalistic, beautiful. There are some testers versions that are black and white, which are stunning. <laughs> uh, it's really fun. Someone also did black and white, but um, reversed the contrast at some points, which is really nice and makes a really cool optical illusion effect. And um, so that's the second chart that there is. And the third chart that there, there is in the pattern is um, one with symbols. So each color has been replaced with a symbol and you can fill it in yourself if you want to color to your own uh, colors because you can pretty much use leftovers as well. These use very little. And you can see here that I used three colors. But you can pretty much make stripes of different 
colors as well. So this is also a really good uh, leftover or stash buster, basically. Yeah. That's it for Yocast. I am obsessed with black and white. Like, I really encourage you to check out the testers pictures because there's a couple that are black and white. There's one that's black and very light pink, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just that sharp contrast. It's really, <laughs> it's working in my brain. And I am planning for a couple of years. Um, the next couple of years, I think I will have some uh, black and white project because I think it's really beautiful. But in the meantime, Let's enjoy this autumny goodness as well. And yeah, so I made it long enough so that I could do two turns if I wanted to, but it's also nice to wear more loosely. That's it. For your cast, which is also available on Ravelry and Payhip, and yeah, like I said, it's uh, it gets meditative and a fairly easy knit, and for anyone who has knit a little bit of color work before, um, it's a really fun project too. So that's it for the couple of designs that I wanted to show you in person, because. I would also like to talk about a pattern that has just been published in a magazine. I don't have the magazine with me yet, but I will insert pictures. Uh, I have been very lucky to have a design published in the latest Pom Pom magazine, so Pom Pom Quarterly, their winter issue. I have a um, sweater published in it, which is the Dachian sweater, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's karma. <laughs> it's karma, because I, I tend to name my patterns with words that are hard to pronounce and so I think the pom pom team wanted to get back at me by choosing <laughs> this name. Um, I actually had Dawn as a temporary placeholder name for the pattern and so they chose Dachian which if I'm not mistaken is an old English word for Dawn and let me know if I'm pronouncing it right. When I'm looking at the um, phonetic symbols uh, it it seems to me like it's that hard uh, but maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> Just let me know. Um, but this is, I'm putting a picture here and you must be wondering what on earth. Um, this is a sweater, which is also a vest, which has a v-neck or a round neck and can be a t-shirt for summer as well. It can be anything. Um, we made a multi option multiple things uh, pattern. So it is knitted bottom up in an all over texture which has uh, bubbles on it and it's, it's the varicella sweater like my, my friend calls it. Uh, I don't know if she's my friend anymore. <laughs> it's um, varicella is um, chicken pox is it? Anyway bubbles. I have been on a journey to figure out how I like bubbles and how I like to design with them. And so like, this is kind of the, the climax, the pinnacle is making a sweater with so many bubbles. <laughs> it's, um, but basically it's this same texture as the one I just showed you on Cloudwall, this one. It's this texture with two twisted stitches and three garter stitch but it has the bubbles uh, placed within. And as I was um, submitting the design to Pom Pom, I really hesitated to send either, like a version with bubbles, a version without bubbles. I like both equally. I just thought that Pom Pom, being Pom Pom, they tend to like um, more fun, uh, creative knits. So I sent the bubbles version and that's what they uh, liked. I think if I, um, if I was to release it individually, I might have gone for the other bubbleless <laughs> version. Um, I would just really like how minimalistic that texture looks without the bubbles as well. Um, do you see what I'm doing? I'm constantly doing this with my designs is that I'm <laughs> 
promoting my design and criticizing it at the same time, which is a really inefficient <laughs> way to do things. And I'm not done because I um, do want to point out that the pattern is fairly easy to knit. It's a really simple texture, really intuitive to follow. Um, however, because it has very uh, multiple options, you do need to read it through a little bit before, just so you know um, which sections um, are pertinent to the version that you want to make, and so that you are clear which parts you must work, because um, we wanted to make it um, short enough for the publication, obviously. Uh, so there are some parts that are repeated. Basically, for example, this this shoulder is the same as this shoulder. And if you're making the round neck, the decrease here are the same as here and here are here, etc. And so several times within the pattern, it says repeat the section from this, etc. So you do need to go back and forth and just have a good view of where you are in the pattern and what you're doing. I just want to give you a heads up. I don't know yet how I will format the digital version of the pattern, um, but yeah, uh, I will figure something, <laughs> I guess. I might make it longer and make it repeat itself um, or clearly separate the different versions into different parts. I don't know, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that uh, don't be afraid by the pattern constantly referring you to other portions. You just need to take the time a little bit to read it through. Um, because, yeah, basically, you knit it from the bottom up. The armholes are uh, comfortable, low enough that they are suitable for the vest version, uh, but they're not too deep either if you're making the sleeves. And then you have a v-neck or a round neck, and if you're making the sleeves, you're making the sleeves. They are, um, uh, they are down in the round. And if you're making a vest or a t-shirt, uh, you have a ribbing edge, which does kind of like a cap sleeve with short rows, basically. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. Uh, it is knitted in fingering way in JC Rini Super Soft. Another one of the super soft yarn, which this one was really soft. Um, and gorgeous, gorgeous colors. The petrol color that the Pom Pom team used to make the sweater sample, absolutely stunning. That blue is gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I do plan to make myself a lot of, <laughs> a lot of this design. Um, I want to make a full sweater with sleeves with a v-neck without the bubbles. I want to make a t-shirt with I think v-neck uh, without the bubbles. I think I'm gonna make it in cotton merino yarn. And I wanna make a sweater with the round neck and the sleeves with the bubbles. So three, <laughs> three samples that I would like to make. And I will talk about this again, probably when the pattern will be released individually, which will be next year. But in the meantime, it, uh, the magazine is available. Um, it should be released soon, uh, in the middle of November. There's a lot of really lovely, colorful uh, designs in it. Pom Pom is a really good pattern um, to support, and um, pattern, uh, magazine to support, because they have a lot of patterns, and their price range, uh, even though they increased recently a bit, their price is still lower than the average for most magazine. So if you do like uh, several patterns in an issue of Pom Pom, it's a really good idea to get it. And the cover design is gorgeous. <laughs> this one, I just, I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to not sink <laughs> myself into <laughs> making too, into planning too many projects for the autumn winter, but I really, really love this one. Um, and yeah, that's it for Dachian, which is in the latest pom-pom, which I hope you will enjoy, and we will talk about it some more in a year or so, um, with my 25 versions. Because that's the thing. I'm in the mood to, made, to make a lot of samples for the same designs, and yeah, this is something that I have already started doing, something that I'm currently doing, and that I plan to do a little bit more. I have a design especially planned for next year, which will require several samples. 
and yeah I don't know why it just dawned on me now <laughs> don't it dawned on me now that I um I, I just like making several versions to showcase all the color possibilities and different little modifications you know that I like to include in the pattern I joke saying that I um I look down on my designs as I'm promoting it, just saying like, if you don't like this, if you don't like bubbles, don't make bubbles, you know, it's it's crap, don't make that. <laughs> um, I say that jokingly, but I do like to um, insist that you can make a lot of modifications and make a pattern your own. And I'm feeling more and more like I want to properly show this as I'm releasing a design which is what I'm doing with the work in progress that I wanted to update you on. So, careful, it hurts. Like, the uh, eye, the colors, like, put on sunglasses or something. Uh, <laughs> sharp colors incoming. Um, in the last episode, I had started to knit uh, this, <laughs> which is a small, lightweight shawl worked with a slipped stitch pattern, which is a simple, easy slipped stitch motif. And you start here and you increase very slowly, very slowly, until you use the, you have used up half of your yarn and then you start to decrease. So it's a, it's a symmetrical triangle. Sure. And I started this because I wanted a colourful and fun project to get my spirits back up after I, I missed a yarn festival. Um, and I finished it. I finished it. I have been using six mini skeins from Schwedenroth Yarns, which is a German dyer. And this is winter berries. So. As I was knitting... <laughs> this, the second part, I thought that my color arrangement was maybe not so great um, because it looks like I have used all the darker colors and then all the super bright colors and maybe if I had swapped one of the pinks with the gray or maybe the two slip stitch color like the gold and the purple if I had reversed them it would have perhaps looked more smooth but then I realized that as you're wearing it, well, you're crossing it. So it's fine. <laughs> and it's fun. It's quite fun to look at. And yeah, I wanted this to be a really fine shawl. This is why there are, the borders are really smooth and little and fine. There's just one garter stitch and one slip stitch. Because I really wanted this to be focused on the... Um, slip stitch basically and that is it for this tiny shawl I used about 480 meters but uh, you can use less or more because basically like I said you just knit the first half until you have used half of your yarn and then you go back the other way and I want to make several samples of this like I said so this is the version that uses six colors and basically you cut you do three and three I have started working on a much more <laughs> relaxing for the eyes version um, a version that only uses three colors and it uses the same three colors throughout these are Filcolana Arweta which is a basic merino nylon sock yarn one I really like, really soft, really lovely colors and good definition. And so I have started working on this. This knits up so fast. I knitted this just in a few hours yesterday. And this is what it looks like so far. Which is a lot more <laughs> muted. <laughs> I think this might be the official <laughs> sample the main sample I don't know yet um, so yeah and I did tell you last time I think that I also want to make one with only two colors because basically you have one main color 
which is the one that does the slip stitch. And then here, you can use whatever. You can use a bunch of different leftovers and just keep going like this, uh, or just one. And I want to make a version with just one. So you see, I haven't knitted a rust project in at least a month, so unbearable. I need to fix this. <laughs> I have not decided yet which color I want to be the slip stitch motif. Instinctively, I think it would look better if it was the white color that would do the slip stitch, but I already have this one with the light gray doing this. But I'm afraid if I use this as the slip stitch color, it might look weird. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, no, actually, I think I think it would look nice. It would be a nice change. And it would not look as veiny, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> if I reverse the colors. Um, Oh, you could also reverse the colors at the halfway point, you see. Oh my god. <laughs> you don't have also to only use the same color throughout. Like, you can change the main color as well. Like, you can do anything. <laughs> you can do anything you like. Anything. Um, but yeah, I just want to showcase these three options as samples. And then there will be many more. <laughs> many more possibilities. And yeah, this is just a fine little show that I would like to release in um, February, late February, if I can. <laughs> uh, I plan to call for testers mid-November, at the end of November, I'll see. Um, I know that some of you really liked it when I started showing it in the last episode. So if you would like to be a, testers, a tester for it, all you need to do to receive my test calls is send me your email address. You can send it to me via Instagram, Ravelry, or via email. You can find my email in the About section of my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, you do need to send it to me. <laughs> YouTube doesn't have a messaging system, so sometimes uh, people leave me comments asking me to send them something or to contact them. It's like, I cannot, <laughs> because I have no means of finding you. Um, so uh, send me your email if you would like to be added to the testers list. And yeah, I don't have any particular demands for uh, testers. I just want to say, <laughs> because sometimes people apply, you don't need to sell your skills to me. I just like having um, new people, fresh eyes uh, on, on the instructions. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's all I, I want. Um, so yeah. If you would like to receive the test call for this and other designs, you can let me know and I will add you to the list. That's it. That's what I wanted to show you uh, for this episode. Uh, all the knitting that I've been doing. And yeah, that's it for this episode. I'm going to stop here. Thank you so much for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, did I tell you? Or did I only say it in the French one? I am in the process of moving out potentially, normally, if all goes well. Um, so it, it's a bit messy. <laughs> I have been working on a uh, secret project and so I didn't have much time to work on my personal projects because I'm in the process of getting things sorted uh, for a move, which is a nightmare. Um, so yeah, I will see you again probably at the beginning of December, maybe in a new location, maybe not. Uh, it depends. It depends how long the internet providers <laughs> take. Um, but yeah, I um, cannot <laughs> film uh, any um, more than this at the moment. So I'm not yet going back to a more frequent podcast uh, rhythm. But I would still see you once per month at least. And I wish you a very good month of November. And thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye.